Now, the incursion into Gaza by Israel has been devastating. Over 2,000 people killed, a great majority of those civilians. Uh, Palestinians rightfully furious about it. Uh, at the same time, Israel says, well, listen, Hamas A started this and B provokes us at every turn. Now there is evidence that uh, Israel is certainly right about some of those claims. So first of all, on the issue of who started this. Now, uh, I have talked about in the past how Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, once the Palestinians agreed to work together, Hamas and Fatah, the government in the West Bank and the people in uh, Gaza, and they decided to take the diplomatic approach and go to the United Nations. Israel was furious about that. And Netanyahu who's a warmonger in general and a right winger, and he wanted to disrupt that. And so he was looking, in my opinion, for an opportunity to go and make a mess of the situation so that Hamas and Fatah could not cooperate. Okay. Now, who was going to help him in that endeavor? Of course it was Hamas. And if Netanyahu drew it up, he couldn't have drawn it up any better than this. And look, let's focus here on who is fundamentally wrong. And in this case, it is Hamas, okay? Because the, what started the actual conflict going back and forth in this instance was the three Israeli teenagers who were killed. Hamas said it was not them, they didn't do it. And there was some reporting to, to that effect. And Israel said, no, it was Hamas. And they went and arrested hundreds of Palestinians. Now, uh, the Palestinians say, well, look, there was already too many arrests of Palestinians, whether they were related to Hamas or they weren't related to Hamas, they were on a hunger strike, okay? And so now you go and arrest hundreds of more people because of this killing. Well, we had to retaliate by firing rockets, and then Israel says we have to retaliate by just pulverizing Gaza as they did, right? But the critical thing there was, did Hamas actually kidnap and kill those three Israeli teenagers? They were, they did not deny it, they also did not take credit for it, a bizarre thing to take credit for. Well, now the jury is in. We have tape of one of their leaders, Salah al aruri he's one of the founders of Hamas, at a gathering of Islamic scholars in Istanbul, a gathering I would not like to be at, um, it's not a fun weekend if you ask me, uh, has admitted that yes, it was Hamas who killed those three teenagers. Let me give you the exact quotes. There was much speculation about this operation and some said it was a conspiracy, he says. Well, it turns out it wasn't. He says, the popular will was exercised throughout our occupied land and culminated in the heroic operation by the Qasem Brigades in imprisoning the three settlers in Hebron. Uh, Qasem Brigades is the, it's kind of a funny thing to say, the more militant wing of Hamas, the militant wing of Hamas, the guys who actually carry out a lot of these attacks. So he says, yes, it was the Qasem Brigade, it was uh, Hamas, and the killing of those three kids was, quote, heroic. I know, when you capture civilians who can't defend themselves and who are unarmed, and they're all teenagers, two of them are 16 years old, very heroic. Gee, how did you wind up doing it? Uh, what, what bravery it requires to kill unarmed people? Wait, isn't that the same thing you're criticizing Israel for? I, I would put that in the ironic camp. All right, and then he says at the end, this was an operation from your brothers in Qassam undertaken to aid their brothers on hunger strike in Israeli prisons. Now, how does it help those brothers in prison when you assassinate three Israeli civilians and then get Israel to arrest more Palestinians, more members of Hamas and non Hamas, and then obliterate God? How did that help your Palestinian brothers? How did that help? Now here are the three kids who were killed. Gilad Shar, 16, Naftali Frankel, 16, uh, Eyal Yafrak, 19. Okay, now, look, I, I couldn't disagree with the settlers more if my life depended on it. You're settling on that land causing further war, it's a disastrous policy, and they continue to expand the settlements, and I blame Netanyahu and the right-wing government of Israel for that. It doesn't excuse killing anybody because, now, what, what will the Hamas say? They'll say, well, if they're settlers, or it, you can't really call them civilians anyway because they're all Israelis and they all agreed to elect Netanyahu, and so they're all guilty. Well, that's funny because that's the same exact argument that the guys you hate, the Netanyahu government, make against you. Well, Gaza elected Hamas, and they, you say you represent the Palestinians, 
So you're civilians in Hamas, I can't tell the difference. So I just killed a, a whole bunch of you, over 2,000 of you, and let you sort it out. Now, according to your own logic, Hamas, that makes sense. Because there's no difference between civilians and soldiers. So then you can't turn around and complain about it. Now, I can, the United Nations can, the rest of the world can say, hey, Israel, you're incredibly strong. Your military is 1,000 times, 10,000 times stronger than the so-called Hamas militants, right? So can you show a little bit of restraint? Plus, your artillery, you know, it is not accurate to the degree where you're trying to target individuals. You know you're going to kill a certain amount of Israelis. It's not me just saying that. It's former members of the Israeli Defense Forces who say that. A great article about it last week saying, come on, man, those artillery strikes, we all know, kill everything in a 50 meter perimeter and wound everything in a 100 meter perimeter. You can't go within, you can't bomb within a 250 meters of Israeli soldiers, even if they are taking cover. So you know you are risking the lives of everybody within 250 meters when you do that in densely packed Gaza. Now that's a guy from the Israeli Defense Forces saying that. But when Hamas causes this in the first place and then says your civilians are the same as your soldiers, well then it allows for that action. So. Let's continue with their stupidity, okay? Uh, now, we had a, a truce, a ceasefire for a while. Uh, my sense of the current state of affairs is that Israel did what it wanted to do. It destroyed the tunnels. It caused great devastation in Gaza. In their own right-wing minds, they taught the Palestinians a lesson, right? They're done with this thing. I don't think they want to continue, okay? Now, I just told you how much I blame them for doing it in the first place and having all those civilians die. But I think they're done with it. That is my best guess. Anyone who's watched this show knows that I'm not, certainly not on the side of the Netanyahu government, right? But Hamas won't let it go. So what do they do? When the truce is over, they immediately start firing rockets. So technically, they didn't break the ceasefire because it was already over. But they didn't have to fire rockets, but they did. So by late Tuesday, the armed wing of Hamas, the Qassam Brigades said on its website that it had fired 29 rockets into Israel in 20 minutes. Yeah, I know, you guys are so brave. And how much uh, damage did that do? Because you're going to go get them, you're going to win, right? No damage, as always. Firing his stupid pea shooters. Look, 67 Israelis killed in this whole thing. Like I said, over 2,000 Palestinians. Uh, three of the uh, Israelis were civilians. One was a civilian that was not Israeli. And so, yes, it does some damage. And it scares the hell out of people. It terrorizes them. But you, so many of your own died. Look, here's some more stats since the assault has resumed. 19 Palestinians killed, including five children and 120 injured. Now, if I thought that Netanyahu was gonna come after you either way, I'd say, look, it's on both of you, uh, but Netanyahu pressed the button. I understand that he's more at fault, right? But here, Netanyahu, as much as I disagree with him, it appears was done with this. You continued, and now you've got 19 more Palestinians killed including five children. But, but look, the source of my frustration is both because they are wrong morally, okay, and <laughs> as a matter of strategy, but also because of how stupid they are, how unbelievably wrong they are, and I believe I figured out why they're on this wrong path. So uh, let me finish up here by uh, telling the leader's uh, words here. Now, here's another Hamas person, the spokesperson, Fabzi Barhoun. He says, if Netanyahu does not understand our message and people's demands in Gaza through political language, we know a way to make him understand. No, you don't, you idiot. No, you don't. That, oh, I'm going to make him understand by continuing to fire all those things that affect almost no one, and then we're going to get our kids killed. How does that make Netanyahu understand? Netanyahu becomes more popular when you fire rockets at him. It, politically speaking, you couldn't help him any more than you're helping him. Monumentally stupid, okay? And I was like, why? why? What's your end game? What's your end game? And then I remembered, they're at a scholarship thing for the Islamic scholars and yada. They're waiting for Allah for, the, for victory. Oh my God, they're so stupid. How are you, what's your end game? Okay, so like you, like a lot of people think Hamas does this so you can gather the sympathy for Palestinians for the war. Okay, you've gathered that, right? Although you just burned it because you said, you now admit that you started the hostilities, okay? And then you just restarted it by continuing to launch uh, rockets into Israel. 
So great, you lost the moral high ground. Well played as usual by the idiots in Hamas, okay? All right, but then let's say that in your grand plan it was to collect sympathy, by the way, which would indicate that you knew they were gonna kill your civilians and that you somewhat looked forward to it as part of your strategy, a charge often made by the Israeli government that you're now kind of agreeing to, okay? So now, okay, you've got the sympathy, then what do you do with it? Uh, I will then ruin it by firing more rockets and kill, trying to kill more civilians. The good people of Palestine, I love you brothers, you should be free. The occupation is 100% wrong. It's been wrong for 47 long years. You've got to get rid of these guys. You cannot have these morons be your leaders. You cannot, you cannot. I know how frustrated you are, I know how angry you are. And, and, and you think your enemy is Israel. Yes, I understand that you think all that, and for good reason your frustration mounts, right? But you should be as frustrated with these people that claim to be your leaders. They don't have an end game. You, okay, you build up the sympathy, then what do you do? Okay, then you're gonna what, beat? Uh, Israel militarily? How? How are you gonna beat them? They don't have a plan. They don't have a plan. They're waiting for Allah to appear and to split the skies and say, okay, Israel is now uh, Palestinian. Where is he? It's been 47 years. The Jews wandered in the desert for only 40 years. Then at least they had some, God had some mercy and then showed up. It's been 47 years, where is Allah? Is he playing with you? Is he waiting for more Palestinian kids to die? No, look, I don't know what your interpretation of God or Allah is. If you think he's a vengeful God and if you're on the Israeli side, you think he's gonna kill all the Muslims and you're on the Muslim side and you think he's gonna kill all the Jews, you're on the Christian side, God knows who gets killed. I don't know, I don't care, but I know he ain't coming. And I know that isn't a logical answer to end the occupation. Now you wanna know a logical answer? Boycott. Economic boycott. Now, why do you think that Israel flips out the most when you go to the United Nations, which is a nonviolent path, okay, when you go and do an economic boycott? Because that is the most likely to succeed. It's not like the United Nations, by their sheer force of will, can get the Palestinians a statehood. But when the United Nations does take action and says Palestine is a state or whatever it might be that they go ahead towards, that could have economic consequences. Look, Israel is a state that is not a dictatorship. So a lot like South Africa, and they'll be deeply offended by that analogy, sad day for them, okay? A lot like South Africa, they have an upper class that runs a lot of businesses. If you do sanctions, you do boycotts, that business class will be very much hurt. They actually run the country. And if their economic interests are hurt enough, they will force change. That's the end game. <laughs> if you think your stupid ass rockets are gonna somehow beat the Israelis that have jets and nuclear weapons, you are the dumbest people on earth. And I'm specifically talking about Hamas and its leadership here. It is never going to work. Come up with a better plan. Not a better plan to kill Israelis, but a better plan for peace, a better plan for freedom, to end the occupation. One of the Israeli airstrikes, according to the Associated Press, appeared to have targeted the home of Mohammed Daif, the Islamic militant group's elusive military chief. He says, ha ha, you didn't get me, they didn't. Okay, you're so clever, you see, you launched the rockets, you're the head of their military chief, and then what happened next? A Hamas spokesman said Daif was not present during the strike on a Gaza house. Five people were killed, including Daif's wife and infant son, Hamas officials said. You got your own wife and your baby killed. And now what? What have you accomplished? You're further away from ending the occupation, you're further away from peace, you're further away from freeing the Palestinian people, and now your own family's killed. There are no bounds to their stupidity. Please, Palestinian people, I am pleading with you. Yes, I don't, and I, I know you're in a horrible situation. It's easy for me to say. And I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you've got to find new leadership. Maybe it's Fatah in the West Bank. At least they're smart enough to go to the United Nations because they, they know that that creates an end game that is plausible, that can actually end the occupation. And I believe an economic boycott is, as I've explained, very sensible here. You, and I believe in nonviolent protests. I mean, there are check, Israeli checkpoints all over the West Bank. 
Why are there checkpoints of another government inside the West Bank? You are occupied, and that is unacceptable. Just do like they do in Ferguson, Missouri. Hands up, don't shoot. Walk through those checkpoints. Now that requires bravery and courage. Let me see those tough guys in Hamas walk up to an Israeli checkpoint unarmed, hands up, don't shoot, and let them beat you, let them detain you, let them arrest you, let them maybe shoot at you. That's courage. You're not killing them. It doesn't take courage to throw a punch. It takes courage to take a punch. Let me see you do that. If you, I swear to you that if you follow the path of nonviolent resistance, economic boycott, and United Nations recognition, just as Israel did, okay, that has an infinitely better chance of working than this immoral idiocy of pursuing violence with no end in sight.